Hey everybody, Erica Nagorski here with Russ Penning in Wilmot, Minnesota. I'm going to ask him a couple questions today about his operation. So how has the past year been for you guys and has there been any notable ups and downs? Well, the challenges in the last year, obviously, just with the higher commodity prices. Um, they're trying to make it feasible to feed cattle, feed calves, get them bought right, get them sold right. Um, you know, there's been some packer some packer conflicts as far as getting cattle sold you know back to even the beginning of covid and we've still seen kind of a ripple effect of that through the last couple of years but i mean all in all the last year has been pretty good i skipped this one tell me about your operation oh um <laughs> so we feed cattle in southwest minnesota um i started feeding cattle or my brother and i started feeding cattle when i first got out of vocational school 2003. um we kind of got our feet wet on uh, small dairy beef, um, Holstein steers. In the last two years, we kind of made the transition to crossbred steers, so they're all Angus cross Holsteins. Um, we had the facilities in place to feed the small calves, so we kind of stayed with that um, with that scheme, I guess. Uh, do you so like the crosses more I than do. Holsteins? The crosses have been a lot more fun to feed. <laughs> yeah. um, they're probably a little hardier animal, um, and just some hybrid vigor from the crossbreeding or what it is. But they seem to be a little more fun, a little more fun to feed. Uh, gives us a few more packer options um, than what we had before feeding straight Holsteins. Um, it's been a pretty good transition for us. Okay. Uh, looking ahead towards the next year, what challenges do you think producers like you will face? Uh, the biggest one's going to be commodity prices. Mm -hmm. I mean, just. The, everything inputs yeah the inflation the inputs of everything from feed i mean even from the farming aspect we farm we grow all our own feed here so it's from from the farming aspect i mean we're fortunate you know with the livestock it complements a grain operation from your fertilizer and in that regard so we don't quite feel that effect as you know some of the grain farmers would but it's still a management you know you know just more dollars going to have to go into doing the same thing we did two years ago to produce the same product. Mm -hmm. uh, five years down the line, where do you see your operation being? Hopefully still here. <laughs> okay, that's true. Um, Any changes? <laughs> we're always changing. If you're not changing, you're dying. So, yeah. I mean, there's always changes. But to foresee them, no, I don't. I mean, you kind of just got to roll with it as it comes. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what. No, for sure. So one of the reasons I picked on Russ for this was his ability to change and flex and new ideas all the time. So tell me about your calves and hog barns a little bit. Oh, so we've, that's kind of our, I don't know, not to say it's our, probably our biggest story or some of the people, yeah. some, whenever people that's come up here, that's probably their biggest question is, um, when we started feeding bottle calves, we converted a bunch of hog barns. So it was, um, my dad and his two brothers farmed farrow sows, farrow to finish, they quit farrowing in 1997. So we had a bunch of facilities sitting empty that um, weren't being utilized. And we also had a feedlot. We fed cattle as long as I can remember. Um, so when we got got kind of going or got started, we started with them, a lot of the nursery barns and farrowing houses and gestation barns that were vacant, sitting empty, basically rotting. Um, and we started kind of converting some buildings and Started with one and one turned into two and two turned into, I think we're probably upwards of 14 right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, some barns we, you know, took a traditional finisher and gutted it, um, switched slats and beams out, put cattle slats on, and we're finishing cattle in it. 40 white hog barn with eight foot ceiling. People drive up and they're like, what in the heck? There's no way. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's been working for 10 years. It, um, so, I mean, we, re we repurposed or refurbished a lot of facilities are they perfect? I mean, no. Do they work good? Yes. Um, I mean, it was a way for us, you know, when you're young, you don't have any money. You got a lot of labor. You got a lot of time. So it was a way for us to utilize our lack of cash and, mm -hmm. you know, abundance of labor to uh, retrofit something and make it work for us. Yeah. Very cool. Anything you'd like to add? Um, no, I'm, that's about it. Okay. Go look at some calves and hog barns. So, use the existing feed lines. Yeah. So this is one of the barns that we did. Um, this was obviously a, a finishing hog.
hot barn. Um, pretty much everything the same. Feed lines, feed drops. The only thing we added, obviously, was a different feeder bunk um, water. and water. We left the gating all the same. here for about eight weeks you know we're running from two to four 200 to 400 pounds okay. um, and then from there they'll go out to a like a hoop, hoop barn facility that's bedded but just a way to get them a little bit bigger to handle the elements um, before we you know turn them loose in southwest minnesota winters so texturized feed through the feed yep. line so i work with our local co-op um, it took some doing to kind of get it fine-tuned to do what we wanted to do with it, but from a fiber standpoint and an energy standpoint. But uh, yeah, we've used existing feed lines, existing feed bends. Um, yeah, it's, it's been good. Keep in the other room. We don't 